I said this a few days ago, I'll say it again, this is a very dangerous video topic because it's Monday night, July the 3rd, and I'm pre-recording this audio. It's going to be up tomorrow morning on July the 4th. Oh yeah, 4th of July. By the way, happy birthday, USA, I guess. But when it comes to this idea, things can change really quickly. We can have one conversation on the phone that happens between Brad Shrilving and the agent at hand between now and like 6 a.m., and it's going to change the entire trajectory of this conversation. But with the way things are going right now, I feel pretty confident in going out there and making this video in the way I want to make it. Because today we're talking about the Toronto Maple Leafs, and one of the guys that they need to shell out a contract to, wherein the negotiations are apparently not going all too well. Let's talk about the big fish that everybody has been bringing up over the past few weeks. It is William Nylander, who's at a $6.9 million AAV contract that takes him to the end of 2023-2024. He is a UFA at the end of the year. And with the entire conversation about guys like Johnny Gaudreau, you've had guys like Matthew Kachuk in the RFA world, you had the John Tavera situation, you're having all these things go on with other free agents that were available, Patrick Kane, Tarasenko, etc. With the status of UFAs and with the status of top-tier guys who are set to becoming UFAs, you could understand why this is a pretty dire situation. Especially when you talk about Johnny Gaudreau, hey, guess who was the GM that lost out on Gaudreau last year? It was Brad Trilliving. The Flames and Gaudreau's camp had some conversations before the 22 season started, but those didn't really amount to anything. They played out the year Johnny Gaudreau finished off the season with the Flames, and then he went to free agency and left. Brad Trilliving was the guy who let that happen. And nowadays, he is definitely under the impression that he does not want to do the same thing. For William Nylander, there's sort of been this growing sentiment amongst the fans that said, if the Maple Leafs cannot find a way to get him his extension the day free agency opens up, or the day he's eligible to sign that extension, then maybe the best move would be to trade this guy away. Not because he's a bad player, but because you cannot guarantee that the contract negotiations will continue throughout the year, or that they'll even be productive enough to get a contract done after the season starts. It's a very prevalent pattern when it comes to contract negotiations for players in the NHL. Once the season begins, you'll see a lot of them saying, hey, we kind of don't want to converse about this during the year. It's kind of a distraction. I just want to focus on playing hockey. And many times that comes back to bite these teams in the behind when they let these negotiations continue on until the summer and then bam, free agency comes and they're gone. Brad Trilliving does not want to repeat his same mistakes. And so for William Nylander, talks have been very, very intricate that they are trying to get that contract extension done. They're going through the motions and we had ourselves an update from a few different sources around the NHL's media sphere. This is what Elliot Friedman said at the 1 hour, 7 minute, and 30 second mark of yesterday's 32 Thoughts podcast. The quote is transcribed here on the R Hockey subreddit. When it comes to William Nylander's negotiations, the biggest problem I think is this. He is not going to want to take less if he doesn't think anybody else is going to. If he believes other players will, then he will. Now, what exactly does that refer to? Well, William Nylander, we already said he's making $6.9 million a year. He is not the only other UFA to be, though, as you also have Austin Matthews signed on till the end of 2024, who's making $11.6 million currently. You also have yourselves John Tavares and Mitch Marner, who are going to expire at the end of 2025. So the idea is, when these guys get their money, William Nylander is not inclined to taking less unless he knows for sure that Matthews, Tavares, and Marner are also going to take less. You also have the idea that other players in the free agent market might take a little bit more of a pay raise just based off of what they're able to do, and William Nylander has been a very good player. We're going to get into this more as the video goes on. But the other update we had had was from Chris Johnston on an episode of the CJ Show on the SDPN. Take a look at this quote here, also transcribed on the subreddit. The Leafs and Nylander? They're not close. William Nylander believes he is a $10 million player, even a bit above that. The Leafs have come at him with a number in the $8 million range. 
I think for Nylander, the big worry is that he doesn't want to be paid so much less than Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. He feels internally that he has a sense of what should be fair there. And this is the thing, you know, negotiations start out like this. The Maple Leafs are going to throw a low ball number, Nylander and his camp are going to throw a high ball number. That's how it always is. But when you phrase it like this, William Nylander believes he's a $10 million player. I go out there and I say, maybe not in the grand scheme of things, is Nylander a $10 million AAV player? But on the Toronto Maple Leafs, based off of how they've navigated the cap the past few years, yeah, Nylander is probably a $10 million player. And the reason I say that is because last year he had 87 points and 82 games played. He was second on the team in points behind Mitch Marner, who had 99. He had two more points than Austin Matthews and the same amount of goals in eight more games played. Matthews, Marner, and Tavares all make significantly more money. Tavares is at 11, Marner is at 10.9, Nylander is at 6.9. Nylander is literally making $4 million less than Mitch Marner. And would you say that the difference between Marner and Nylander on the ice in terms of their caliber of talent is that of a $4 million difference? I'd go out there and I'd say probably not, because when it comes to Nylander, there's one aspect of his game that has been present that hasn't been there for any of the other guys. And you already know where I'm going with this commentary because I've mentioned this point in the past. When it comes to showing off in the playoffs, showing up, scoring points, actually being an impact player and getting your name on the score sheet, William Nylander does that to no end compared to his eight-digit million-dollar counterparts. Marner, Tavares, and Matthews completely disappeared in that second-round series against the Florida Panthers. You know who didn't? William Nylander. You want to talk about all the series in the past, in the first round, the Columbus series, the Montreal series, where it was fault after fault. Everybody was talking about guys like Matthews and Marner not showing up, but Nylander was the one constant that always goes out there and gets himself on the board. When it comes to regular season point production, he's right up there. He's maybe a step below Marner and Matthews in the grand scheme of things, but he's there. And when it comes to what guys are capable of doing in the postseason, I'd argue that Nylander is more consistent and just straight up better than all these other players are when it comes to postseason performance. And that's not really all that difficult to see. It's been a pattern the past few years. And so to indicate that William Nylander should not be in the same territory, financially speaking, as the rest of these Toronto Maple Leafs, I could totally understand why the argument says, yeah, Nylander should be viewed in the same way. He is as valuable, if not more valuable, than any of these guys, especially when the games get important. So... Ultimately, I feel like it's a pretty big deal seeing how they're not close, how their numbers are so far apart, and how these negotiations may get just a little bit more difficult as time goes on. Especially now, since the Maple Leafs already signed Bertuzzi, Domi, Ryan Reeves, and everybody else, they gave money out to guys. And now, I mean, what's the cap hit on Cap Friendly? They have, at the moment of recording this audio a projected cap space of negative $8.8 .8 million a year. I know they're trying to get rid of Matt Murray, they're doing stuff to try to free up space, which they needed to do, admittedly, but William Nylander is the guy who I feel like is in the most dire situation here when it comes to what will directly happen as a result of these potential moves. For Austin Matthews, we know he's going to be there. We know the Maple Leafs are going to shell out a whole bunch of money for this guy. He could be the most expensive player in the NHL if Brad Trilliving sees it fit. And the Maple Leafs are not going to allow Austin Matthews to go to unrestricted free agency without getting anything for him. Right? Right? I don't know. Who really knows, dude? Honestly, even with Nylander, the same thing could happen again, but I feel like the idea of trading Nylander away has been a lot more prevalent the past little while here, just because fans are aware that it's going to be difficult to re-sign this guy, and if you're not able to agree on a contract by the time the season starts out, then maybe it's time to let him go. But then again, other teams are loading up, they're getting to the cap ceiling as well, so maybe it'll be pretty difficult to let this go through, who really knows? But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your opinions about William Nylander and the negotiations going on at the moment? I feel comfortable making this video Monday night, July 3rd, and uploading it July 4th tomorrow morning because... I mean, look, the update said that it was far apart, so if it really is as far apart as we are led to believing that it is, then okay, there probably is not going to be a deal done anytime soon. There might be a trade or something, but who really knows? 
Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. What are your opinions about William Nylander as a player? How much do you think he should be worth? Do you think he should be or could be considered in the same dollar amount territory as the other top Maple Leaf forwards on his team? Do you think the argument that I brought up is good enough to say, yeah, that's the case here? Playoff success, playoff reliability, actual production when the games matter the most. William Nylander is there, and he is a very talented player just outside of that. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishra Shrolls 99. And bye.